Today, I'm gonna show you how to build my latest medieval mod that I call the Swamp Quest. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I made this build for the Summer Jaws 2023 that will run in June and July, link down below in the description to check it out. In particular, today we are building for the category 12 by 12 vignette, that is one of the categories that is always there. Here you can see a comparison between the three vignettes that I built in the past three years for this particular category. You can see that this year I went with a totally different approach compared to the first two uh, tall tower uh, castle looking build. Now here we have our base uh, 12 by 12 as I said and from here we are going to start to build up. So what we're going to have, we're going to have the water, we're going to have the swamp here at the front while at the back here we are going to ent enter into some sort of a dungeon cave kind of thing. So here you can see that I already added a few details. Uh, we have some greenery, we have some steps uh, with some uh, of these uh, ingot pieces going down. We have a torch here on an angle and we also have a couple of mushroom here. Uh, this one is just with a, with, a, with a bigger dome piece and this one is actually using this interesting uh, triangular shape uh, cone that is connecting at the bottom here, creating a nice interesting shape. But now let's move quickly to the water. So for the water, I wanted to go break build. So I use two shades of green, even if you can see here, there is a little bit of this color that actually I don't mind. So we have sand green and olive green. This is just gonna slide on the tiles and connect over here on the side. So here you can see we have already a completed, a uh, very simple straightforward water. Uh, one detail that I'm not too happy about it here, I want to, of course, to create a sort of slope. So with the water that get lower towards the coast and I had to use these triangular tiles and uh, they have a little bit too much gap. So it doesn't look so natural on this side, while I think on the front side is a little bit better. Here you can see these fairly new plant pieces that come from the dried flowers and I already used uh, last week for my... My, my, my last build that was the, the Grogu Jedi training. And today I decided to bring this up into an even bigger uh, creation, creating some sort of mangrove. So here I have another bigger uh, chunk of land to which I build up with a few other pieces uh, in this green and also some brown coming down, a sort of mangrove tree that goes down into the water. So this is all interconnected uh, in some way to create this sort of a uh, taller tree. Inside there, let's see if I can do it without messing up. I want to add a little snake that is going to poke out uh, from the, the bottom part of this mangrove. There we go. Then I can slide this back. So we have that little uh, snake poking out a little bit here into the water. We are going to actually make this tree a little bit taller with another uh, one on this side uh, because it was a little bit with uh, not enough uh, height on the on this left side. So I decided to add a little more, a little bit more. And you can see here we are still staying in between the 12 by 12 uh, space for this uh, vignette in which I can actually have a little bit of overhang for accessories and uh, greenery. Here I have another couple of interesting mushroom. This one is a sort of ball kind of thing. While yes, I'm using a pirate uh, sort of wet bandana that uh, when looking from the right perspective, look like a very interesting uh, mushroom. Now over here, we're gonna have our two characters uh, that are coming off the water. So we have two, these two, a medieval minifigure that are walking into this swamp and are going to discover this dungeon. So as you can see here, I just use the torso and then I bring it up a little bit, uh, making sure that one leg is a little bit higher because it's already towards the end of the swamp and is about to come up. So he has one leg down and one leg flex, so he's stepping up to go towards that side. Uh, while his companion here with the big beard is actually uh, down in the water till he zips. And this is the reason why I added this black uh, plate over here. I don't know whether the effect actually makes sense or not, but what I wanted to do is to have like, so that he's walking towards that direction and the back of the feet can be seen through uh, this cut of the swamp. 
I don't know whether it's an effect that makes sense or if only works if I explain it to you. You can let me know down in the comments. And also here at the front, I decided to add uh, one uh, little frog. So we already added a couple of more, a couple of animals. We are gonna add one more later on. So now we have to build uh, this backside with the dungeon. So I need to add a couple of slopes uh, to uh, create a sort of hill. So here we have a modified brick with some slope there and they have a similar structure on the other side over here. So this is where uh, we are gonna get up to create the entrance of the dungeon, which I created with this uh, little structure. So we have this sort of marker on top. Uh, so some, uh, some terrain, some reddish brown. Uh, this black is to uh, look like we are going into a dark dungeon. I have this uh, two by four piece that I found recently, but I don't know uh, honestly what is called and what is for, but I think it looks quite nice there. And then I try to give a curve, uh, a little bit of curve detail at the front. This is gonna connect here to this uh, right in the center of that plate with the hole. And this is just gonna be in the middle at an angle. Uh, and it's gonna be covered by the terrain on top. So what we're gonna do here is add one of these uh, plate over there. I'm gonna add a support behind, and then I have a bigger structure over here that is gonna connect at the back, here on the left, and here on the right. So now it's all covered and solid. Uh, when I took the picture for this, actually, I also use a little bit of cardboard at the back so that I can uh, block out all the lights coming from behind because I didn't have much space uh, to cover all the gaps for the little, uh, you can see the lights coming in here and there. It all fit in between my 12 by 12 space, uh, but it was a little bit too difficult to cover all this. So when I took the picture, I used a little bit of cardboard box uh, to block the light. Now, here we are gonna add another animal companion that is gonna look over the dungeon from the top. So it seems like these animals are pretty interested in what's happening over here. And now over there, we are gonna add a big tree. Uh, I have it here on a plate because I don't wanna make it fall over because it's a bit, uh, a bit fragile. So this is actually the structure that I created. Uh, let me take it off. So here at the bottom, I have actually the feet of some uh, sort of mini, um, Super Mario character. He come up with this big macaroni, uh, uh, I don't know what it's called, macaroni piece. Uh, inside we have a couple of extra running that keeps everything together. And then we have a few branches coming off, a big one that goes up, and then two smaller ones that go on both sides. I added a few of these transparent angle uh, studs so that we can give a little bit of an interesting angle. We have two shades of green and then uh, the olive green uh, of these uh, twirling pieces coming down uh, from the top. So we are gonna connect this uh, right in front here and you can see I already have a couple of pieces uh, that should look like some sort of uh, roots of this big tree. Now, it's not fitting everything into the screen, but I think more or less you have an idea of the completed build. But now we have the last detail to add and it's gonna fill up this gap that was a little bit empty. So I created a sort of cage that is gonna be hanging from the top. Uh, so you can see it's a very simple structure. So I'm using these pieces to create a cage. Uh, I have four tall ones and three smaller ones with a little bit of extra detail at the bottom just to uh, fill up a little bit of space. Inside, I'm gonna put a minifigure skeleton with a shield. So this is probably some other knight, some other adventurer that uh, was looking for something into this dungeon and didn't make it through. So this is gonna connect with that uh, black uh, row piece over there. I'm just gonna close this. Let me rearrange a little bit because I need to find the right spot. So we are gonna put these two together. This is gonna go in there and then I'm gonna close everything and then it can hang. Sorry, of course, when I'm on camera, this didn't work well. Let's put it down a little bit. And let's try one more time. Hopefully this is gonna be the good one to complete the scene for you uh, on camera. There we go. 
Now, completed scene. Uh, so this will this will fill up the gap nicely. Uh, I will link down below the previous two vignettes so you can go and check it out and see what I built in the past two years. Uh, this is a very different direction, but I'm uh, pretty happy about this as I was happy for the, the first two years, my first two entries for this vignette category. And if you like this, a little bit of mangrove swampy build, I actually recommend, to, I recommend you to watch the build that I made last week for the Grogus Jedi training that you can find here on the left. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next video. Ciao, ciao.